I'm Pamela Elgin with Surf Girl Eats, healthy food from coastal California. Today I'm going to be making tomatillo salsa two ways. I'm going to do one roasted version in the oven. We'll bring out a lot of the smokiness in the tomatillos and get some caramelization on the onions. I'm also going to do a fresh version so we get all the tartness in those tomatillos. I'll bring that out with a little bit of sea salt and lime juice. I think you're going to love it. So stay with me to find out how to make these awesome salsas. making the roasted tomatillo salsa because that's going to take just a little bit longer. What you want to do is remove each of these papery husks from the tomatillos and just set those aside. The tomatillo is a relative of the tomato as you can see it's part of the nightshade family so they look very similar to tomatoes. Um, the texture is also similar to a tomato but they have a nice tart flavor to them and also a slightly firmer texture. I'm using about a pound and a half of tomatillos for my salsa. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice each of these guys in half here. You can see they have a nice um, firm texture. They're a relative also of the Cape Gooseberry. So we'll just place these onto a roasting pan. To this pan I've added one yellow onion. I've also added an Anaheim chili and half of a serrano pepper. I've tossed it with two tablespoons of canola oil and now I'm just going to generously season it with salt. So we'll give everything a good toss and then we'll place it into the oven and bake for about 25 minutes. To make the fresh salsa we're going to mince the tomatillo. You want to get a really fine dice on this. Just going to scoop all of this up and place it into our bowl here. To the minced tomatillo we're going to add about half a cup of red onion. I really like the flavor of red onion when you're doing something raw. Also going to do about half of a jalapeno pepper. To this I'm going to add some fresh lemon juice. These little lemons came off of a tree from some friend's house. We were staying in Phoenix last week. We had to evacuate due to the Thomas fire here in Santa Barbara. Um, it was quite an adventure, but it was really fun to stay with friends and to pick fresh citrus. So now I'm putting it to good use. So to this salsa, I'm also going to add a couple fresh scallions or green onions. Just want to slice those thinly on a bias. And we're going to use the white and the green parts. For this salsa. This salsa is coming together beautifully. Alright, to this I'm going to add a generous handful of fresh cilantro. I'm going to roughly chop this. Now to this salsa we're going to add a generous pinch of sea salt. And what this does is it helps draw the moisture out of the cilantro, out of the jalapeno and those awesome tomatillos and it's going to really bring out the flavors in all of those things. So I'm just going to toss it here with my hands and then we're going to set it aside and let the salt draw the liquid out of all of these ingredients. Doesn't this look great? All right, let's go check on our food in the oven and see if it's done. Now that our fresh salsa is all done and the tomatillos and onions have roasted, we're going to put them into a blender. You can see that they're quite soft. Tomatillos have a lot of pectin in them, which is similar to what's found in apples that gives jams and jellies its um, kind of a viscous quality to them. So that's going to help to thicken the salsa and make it really delicious. All right, I've blended the roasted tomatillo salsa and now I'm just going to pour it right into this bowl. 
To the roasted vegetables, I added about half a cup of fresh cilantro and then a couple more tablespoons of lemon juice. Each of these salsas is totally unique and brings out the qualities in the tomatillo. The fresh salsa has a tartness and a liveliness, especially a little bit of heat from that jalapeno. And then here in the roasted salsa, we get sweetness, mm. just a hint of heat, and also the savory caramelization from those tomatillos and onions. Thanks so much for joining me today and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Of course, you can always get the recipes on my blog, surfgirleats.com. I've eaten like a thousand chips now.